So, you've decided you want to play uh, this crazy instrument called a steel guitar, and you're probably getting a little bit frustrated with it if you're a beginner. You're finding that it's a very difficult instrument to understand. It's got a lot of strings, pedals, knee levers. And I've noticed that a lot of the instruction on the internet, uh, YouTube and that, it's full of charts and graphs and spreadsheets and things that show all the strings that are legal and, you know, they take you through the scale going up the... And you gotta go up, you gotta learn how to use your right hand through all the strings. It's, it's kind of confusing. Um, the, in this video, I'm gonna show you a really simple way to understand the neck of the steel guitar. It's easy to play, and before long, you can be playing along with any, at least the slower songs, um, any melody. You're gonna be able to do a lot with, uh, with what I'm about to show you, and it's not too complicated. When you take a, a thing that's complicated, like a pedal steel guitar, the way to learn it is to break it down into little comprehensible pieces so that you're not trying to absorb the whole complex instrument all at one time. Uh, that can be overwhelming and what I'm worried about is that beginning steel guitar players will quit and give up the instrument, throw it in the closet, eventually sell the thing or, you know, the next thing you know it's on Craigslist. So I want you guys to stay with the instrument and learn how to play it and not to get too frustrated. It's so easy to get frustrated on the pedal steel. So don't think you have to be playing the real fast stuff right at first. Let's start slow and you can, I'm going to show you a couple of scales that you're going to use to play most songs. And we're going to do them slow, but you can, as you get better and you think you're able to progress, you can start playing those scales um, faster, single note stuff. And uh, you'll find that a lot of that single note fast stuff is built out of those scales also. So you're going to be pretty versatile. What these scales do is give you a foundation to build on and um, build your steel playing from there. So I'm guessing most of you look at the steel guitar neck and let's say you're going to play in the key of D. You kind of think in terms of the fifth fret with pedals down. That's your G chord, then your A chord, and back to D. Or you come up to the tenth fret and... Um, that's your D, no pedals. A, G, then back to D. So you're kind of locked into these two spots. But I want to try to get you thinking about the whole neck and how to use the rest of the neck. There's a couple things that will help you understand the neck. I think it'll uh, make the instrument a lot more uh, fun for you to play. And that's going to be two scales. Um, there's uh, this one that sounds like this. It's both in the key of D, all this uh, scale. Okay, I'll show you how I was doing that. Um, on the nice thing about these is you're only losing, using two strings, three and five. So you never have to look at your right hand, only your left hand and worry about your pedals. And you're only worrying about your A and B pedals when you do this. So. Uh, it gets rid of having to fool around with all these strings with your right hand. So uh, that's one thing that's nice about this. The right hand is where all the tricks come, usually with the steel guitar. So we're keeping that hand simple. So we're going to start off the fifth fret, paddles down. Three and five, always three and five strings. Go up to the eighth fret, no pedals. Tenth fret, no pedals. Tenth fret, A and B. Twelfth fret, A and B. 15th fret, no pedals, 17th fret, no pedals, and then back to the D, 17th fret, A and B. Okay, so that's that scale. Do it again. You should also learn it backwards because you'll be playing it backwards. Here's the next scale. Uh, we're going to start actually on the third fret. This is a scale that's going to give you a really nice understanding of the neck, much more expanded understanding of the neck than you have right now probably. So um, this is a nice one to learn. It's just that previous scale plus this one and you'll be, you're going to be able to play all kinds of songs with this, these two scales. So it starts on the third fret. Um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to either push our A pedal or we're going to lower our E's. 
or both. So. So, here we go. We're going to start um, with uh, E's lowered, third, third fret, always strings four and five, no other strings. Then we're going to push the A pedal down, let off the E uh, lowers. And I just push the B pedal anyway. Go up to the fifth fret, have the A pedal down. Eighth fret, E's lowered. Tenth fret, E's lowered. 10th fret, A pedal down, 12th fret, A pedal down, 15th fret, E strings lowered. You should also practice this one backwards because you use it back and forth, of course, so. little addition to that scale using strings four and five is that when your E's are lowered with using your knee lever no A pedal down like up the 15th fret this is your D chord if you drop down two frets raise your E's a half a step use that knee lever and then hit your A pedal I call that the F knee lever and the A pedal it's the same notes there's a lot of times when that's going to be handy. You'll see what I mean, but let's say the scale goes. You can do it this way. Just a little more convenient at times. All right, so let's play something using this scale, all right? And we'll play um, Welcome to My World. That Welcome to My World, won't you come on in? Uh, so let's start it. Um, we're going to do that in the key of D. We're going to do it without using the AF levers. We're going to do it just lowering the E's and raising the A's. And it's going to sound like this. On that last one, instead of going, I use the AF. It's a little more convenient. So now let's do the same thing, but we'll combine the two scales that I showed you. And this time I'm going to start the song instead of way up here. I'm going to start it right here. Just a little bit easier. So here we go. We're going to combine the 3 and 5 string scale and the 4 and 5. We're going to start with the 4 and 5. So on that, I don't really want to teach you how to play it, but you can figure this a lot of this out. Just every time I'm in a position, you kind of know where I am, but um, or what I'm doing. So using those two scales, um, there's, you can almost play any melody. Uh, if you think your way through it, just kind of learn it on your own. You'll start to develop a real understanding of the neck. You'll be going all over the neck instead of just in these three positions here and these three here. You'll be all up and down. The other thing I want to show you is <clears throat> when you play these strings three and five, so we start on up for the scale. If you think about it, three strings three and six are the same note, just one's an octave higher. So instead of playing three and five, you can play five and six and do the same, uh, get this, play the same scale. So now I'm just playing six and five, doing just like I did on three and five. Now 
And on the other scale that I showed you, using strings four and five, etc., on up, uh, strings four and eight are the same note, just an octave off. So you can play eight and five, and it sounds kind of like this. So let's just do one more melody, for example, as an example, um, on strings four and five. That uh, scale, we'll do a little Christmas song everybody knows, Silent Night, goes something like this. So here comes uh, my advice part of the video. You're going to be fairly new at playing the steel guitar, and maybe the guys in the band are all going to be fairly new too. So when you're playing uh, steel on stage, you're you're a, sort of a part-time picker. You know, the bass players all the time, drummers all the time. Steel plays maybe half time, maybe less. So don't try to overplay. And uh, when you do play, uh, and the singer's singing, try not to play behind him. You, know, you can maybe later on you can do that, but at first you might be a little out of tune or playing the wrong chords. Let the singer sing and then fill in like "Welcome to My World." So he'd um, "Welcome to My World." Won't you come on in? Miracles appear, and then just kind of play in between his singing. And when it comes time to play the lead, whatever song you're on, try to play it exactly like the melody. Uh, especially in a young band that's just starting out, uh, you get way off the melody, the rest of the band could forget where in the hell they are, and, and you could be way lost. And uh, so yeah, try to play the melody as close as the, you can on the steel guitar. So the steel guitar will match the melody almost exactly. If you can do that, um, the band will appreciate it, the people out in the audience will, and uh, It'll make you a better steel player. So another piece of advice I'd like to give you is when you're on stage playing and you're in a band and you're kind of new to it all and the band might be new to it all, try to play uh, simple if you can. You don't need to play complex things. If you watch uh, steel players at the pedal steel guitar convention maybe in St. Louis and you think that's the way you should play, that's just for the steel guitar conventions. That's not how steel players play on stage in a band. It'd be way too much steel and not enough of the other stuff. So um, you need to know when to play, when not to play. You're a part-time instrument. At best, uh, you know, you're not playing all the time like a bass player. Um, and, not, and complicated is not always better. Fast is not always better. Difficult is not always better. Uh, what fits the song. So I was watching a, a video on YouTube and Vince Gill was talking about one of the first times he was in the studio and he, he got done playing a song. He was just a lead player on it. He wasn't singing. And uh, when he was done, the producer got on the, this little microphone and said, good job everybody, except uh, Vince, we want you to play that uh, lead over again. And this time, only play half of everything you know. So he overcomplicated it and he learned a good lesson there, he said. And uh, I think simple can be a lot better than complicated. So you can just take these two little um, scales, use them together, Kind of learn to get, learn, you're going to start learning the neck a lot better than you did before, and you'll understand the neck better than you did before. And it might be simple what you're playing, but it's going to be very tasteful. And if you can play it in tune, you're going to sound pretty good on a steel guitar. And for most of you guys, don't try to rush things. Uh, you know, you've got a job, probably got a wife, maybe kids, who knows, grandkids, if you're starting late in life doing this. 
you got parents, you got hobbies, you got other things. You're, unless you're doing it full time, you're not going to be a great player. You're not going to be playing the steel guitar lead to Ricky Skaggs. I'm just a country boy right away or anytime soon. You'd have to be playing all the time to get that good, the fast stuff. So, um, you know, play within your means, within your time budget that you have, the time you have to dedicate to the instrument. But, um, yeah, I think you can be uh, really satisfied with your playing. A little bit of knowledge of these scales, a little bit of time practicing them. And when you're done doing them in D and you kind of figure something out, start working in other keys, you know, go to C and E and A. And uh, before long, you're going to find you're a pretty good steel player. I hope you appreciate the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.